This is a pretty cool story, right? Renewable energy eventually will power every single electric car everywhere. I know this sounds crazy, but eventually this will happen simply because it is the cheapest form of energy right now everywhere in the world. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name's Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. If you want to know a bit about me, I'll put a link in the description below to a video I made a bit about my background and um, what I love to do. By the way, if you want to check out my boy's YouTube channel, you can see that. I'll put a link in the description below to Jack and Cal BMX. We do a lot of traveling around Australia for their BMX racing and they love it. I love it. I love taking them and love seeing them succeed and, and seeing them, you know, change and grow and develop a lot. It's a really, really satisfying as a parent to see that in your kids. It's also really satisfying to see it change to clean, renewable energy. I absolutely love these kinds of stories. They got to make you feel good, right? Makes you feel good when you see things getting better. Makes you feel good when you see the media actually reporting positive news. Isn't that weird? Unfortunately, the majority of the media doesn't report on this kind of thing. So kudos to The Electric, Clean Technica, and many other websites for reporting on positive news. Renewables met 100% of the rise in global electricity demand in the first half of 2022. For one, here in Australia, there is so much going on in renewable energy. Our country is absolutely transforming before our eyes. All coal plants will be shut down by 2035 here in Australia. I mean, I think actually more, all of them will be shut down by 2030, but there's announcements for all of them to be shut down by 2035. That'll change, of course, over time, because why? It's expensive to keep these places running, to keep them running. They're basically just big money pits. Renewables met all the rise in global electricity increase in the first half of 2022, preventing any growth in coal and gas generation, according to a report published by Ember. The rise in wind and solar generation met over 75% of the demand growth in the first half of 2022, while hydro met the remainder preventing a possible 4% increase in fossil fuel generation and avoiding 40 billion in fuel costs and 230 metric tons of CO2 in emissions. Tell that to your electric car hating friends, shove that down their throats. Yeah, this is good news. You know what? More and more renewable energy is powering EVs as well. That's something important to remember. Most people with an EV, not all of them, but most people actually have solar panels. That's how they power their cars. It costs them almost nothing. Senior analyst at Ember said this, wind and solar are proving themselves during the energy crisis. The first step to ending the grip of expensive polluting fossil fuels is to build enough clean power to meet the world's growing appetite for electricity. One thing that I've noticed this year, wind turbines are getting bigger and bigger and actually more efficient and more affordable. And that's why so many wind turbine farms are being built offshore and onshore all around the world, either being built or being planned to be built. More and more enormous batteries are being installed all around the world as well. Massive, massive battery packs. And the size of these things is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as the price actually does come down. Now, believe it or not, yes, the prices are coming down. And the cost of fossil fuel electricity is going up. Now, for example, here in Australia, the only state here in Australia where the cost of electricity hasn't gone up is the only state here in Australia which uses only renewable energy. That's an interesting fact. And it's actually a similar scenario in many places around the world. Now, this report analyzes electricity data from 75 countries representing 90% of global electricity demand. It's very comprehensive. It compares the first six months of 2021 to the first half of 2021, it compares the first six months of 2022 to the first six months of 2021 to show how the electricity transition has progressed. The report finds that global electricity demand grew by a pretty sizable 389 terawatt hours. Remember, a lot of the world still doesn't have electricity, but remember, a lot of the Western world didn't have electricity 100 years ago either, or 70 years ago, in fact. So it grew by 389 terawatt hours in the first six months of the year. Renewables, wind, solar, and hydro increased by 416 terawatt hours, exceeding the rise in electricity demand by around 10%. Wind and solar alone rose by 300 terawatt hours, 
which was equal to 77% in the rise in global electricity demand. In China, the rise in wind and solar generation alone met 92% of its electricity demand increase. In the US, it was 81%. In India, it was 23%. As a result of the growth in renewables this year, fossil fuel generation was unchanged at five terawatt hours. Coal fell by 36 terawatt hours, down 1%. Gas by one terawatt hour down 0.05%. This offset a slight rise in other fossil fuels, mainly oil, 42 terawatt hours. Consequently, global CO2 power sector emissions were unchanged in the first half of 2022 compared to the same period last year, despite a very big increase in electricity demand worldwide. Now remember, the first six months of last year, a lot of people weren't, weren't traveling, weren't commuting. So CO2 actually decreased because of COVID. The COVID pandemic actually meant there was a pretty big decrease worldwide in the amount of CO2. But you would expect it to increase as a result of people going back to work, as a result of all the lockdowns ending. But in fact, it didn't increase because of the increase in renewable energy generation worldwide. Coal in the EU rose 15%, only to cover a temporary shortfall in nuclear and hydro generation. Temporary though. Coal in India rose 10% because of a sharp rebound in electricity demand from lows early last year when the pandemic struck the hardest. Globally though, those rises were offset by coal power falls of 3% in China and 7% in the US. The growth in wind and solar prevented a 4% rise in fossil fuel electricity generation worldwide. Electric says that in China, the growth in wind and solar enabled fossil fuel power to fall by 3%. Without this growth, fossil fuels would have risen by 1%. In India, fossil fuel power rose by 9%, but it would have been 12% without growth in wind and solar. In the US, it slowed down the rise in fossil fuel power from 7% to 1%. In the EU, fossil fuel power rose by 6%, but it would have been 16% without a growth in wind and solar. However, this is just the start, right? More and more projects are ramping up around the world for wind generation, for solar power, battery storage, and other forms of renewable energy as well. Despite the health in fossil fuel generation in the first half of 2022, coal and gas generation increased in July and August. It leaves open the possibility that power sector emissions in 2022 actually could rise a little bit. Further, a new report from San Francisco-based NGO Global Energy Monitor found that approximately 89.6 gigawatts of gas plants are in development globally, totaling 5 million metric tons of CO2 in lifetime emissions if built. Clearly, it's very important for governments to continue to help subsidize the renewable energy industry, the clean energy industry, because this is what happens, right? The cost of solar and wind have come down by enormous amounts over the past 40 years, as absolutely astronomical amounts. In fact, more than 90%. That only came about from subsidies that went into developing solar panels, helping them to become more efficient, developing wind generation, helping that industry get a foothold. Now, it's still in its early days, but I'm still convinced that the disruption of fossil fuels will continue this year, next year, and it will only get bigger and bigger and bigger. Even though some of this report isn't positive, some of it is positive, I believe that by this time next year, any rises in energy costs around the world will be completely offset and more by the increase in renewable energy being rolled out. Right now, I've got literally probably 45 tabs open on my computer showing an incredible number of projects all around the world for solar, wind, and battery storage. The future, my friends, will get better. It's a great time to be alive right now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.